A few weeks ago, I was contacted by a man named Arseny, picture it here. He's Ukrainian, but he's currently based in Latvia, and he asked me if I wanted to make a video about his latest instrument. It's a synthesizer called Solar 42. It's specifically designed for making ambient drone music. You see, it even says ambient right on the tin. I said yes because I'd read a lot about it, and it seemed like a pretty unique instrument. By the way, since this was sent to me for free, I'm going to click on this little box when I upload the video. So when you see this on the screen, that's what that means. So this was originally going to be an unboxing style video. In fact, I kind of regret that you don't get to see my initial reaction on opening the box because it's a very cool object. It's kind of like the controls of a spaceship or something. Anyway, as I was working on that version of the video, I quickly realized that by puttering around a synth I hardly knew, I might be doing this instrument a huge disservice. So instead, I took a break. As I'm recording this now, I've had it in my hands for three weeks, and during that time I've played it almost every day. So let's get started. Let's make some ambient music. The very first thing we're going to do is make a drone. These computer key buttons are how you activate the drone voices. Each one activates a different voice. Let's start with drone voice one. This is the actual oscillator block where we can configure how it sounds. Try to ignore the coffee stain to the left of it. There's a hold button up here so I can just press that and the note will keep playing. Each of these buttons activates a different oscillator within the larger voice. And each of these knobs tunes the note. Okay, I'm going to add another oscillator in. And I'm going to tune that. By the way, check out this knob. It sort of detunes all of the oscillators at the same time. Let's bring it back up. Another cool thing is this thing. It's a light sensor. If I have the mod switch turned on, I can actually make the pitches fluctuate depending on how much light there is. I'm not able to get a hugely musical sound out of this feature. At some point, someone's going to come along and they're going to be able to play this like an instrument. Now that we've got a drone going, we can use the keyboard to play melodies on top of it. To add more shape to the sound, I can slowly change the filter cutoff. This thing has two Polyvox low-pass filters. Polyvox was a kind of synthesizer made in the Soviet Union, and it's become something of a cult item, in part due to the distinctive sound of its filter. So part of the reason this sounds so cool is that right now, all of this is being sent through the built-in effects unit. A while back, Elta Music released a guitar pedal that had this same unique system. Almost like video game cartridges, you plug in the cartridge and then you can load different effects from it. Right now I'm using the Infinity cartridge. According to the manual, you can actually load different effects on the left and right channels, which is really cool. Also, you can plug a guitar into the Solar 42 and just use it as a giant effects pedal. I'm still slowly making my way through all of the effects. There are 12 cartridges, each with three effects. So far, the quality has been really high on all of the ones I've tried. Part of the reason that I've been going through them so slowly is that there are a few of them that I like so much that it's hard to motivate myself to switch to another cartridge. So, so far we've looked at the drone voices, we've touched on the melodic voices, but there's actually a weird third kind of oscillator. When I turn it on, it generates a tone, and then I can use these settings to do AM or FM modulation on it. You can use it to produce all sorts of weird sound effects. One thing about my own musical taste is that I don't tend to produce stuff that's very harsh sounding. The Solar 42 is very good at producing grimy, sludgy sounds, but because it's not really an aesthetic that I work in, those aren't going to be the sounds that I mostly showcase in this video. By the way, this also has a white noise generator. For some reason, Doing filter sweeps on white noise always sounds great. So one thing I like to do is to take a pad sound that's maybe a little too basic and mix it with white noise. 
And then when we do filter sweeps with a low pass filter, we get a pleasant kind of ocean waves effect. In the world of ambient, where often you just have one or two chords for the entire length of a piece of music, movement tends to be really important. Having a sound that subtly shifts from one state to another is often the thing that gives a piece of ambient music its shape. To address that, this thing has a bunch of different utilities for modulating parameters. There are two low frequency oscillators, there's this five step sequencer, there's even this piezo microphone, which together with this envelope follower allows you to introduce all kinds of fluctuations. We can use these modulation tools to change the effects parameters or the filter settings. For example, right now I'm using the step sequencer to trigger the two voices. I'm also using it to control the filter. Okay, I'm going to take all this apart and I'm going to try to make a second chord. Once again, we find ourselves tuning oscillators. It really is an essential part of using this instrument. Every piece I've made using it has started with this process. As the website explains, part of the inspiration for this synthesizer is an instrument that Leon Theremin made in 1926 called the Keyboard Electric Harmonium. In Theremin's machine, each of these knobs controlled the pitch of a different key. Okay. We've got two chords that are a whole step apart. Now I'm going to try to write a lead melody that works with both chords. Before I do that, I'm going to pick a lead sound. By default, the keyboard triggers these two voices here. These are the melodic voices. I'm going to turn the effects down, and I'm going to turn voice 4 down so we can hear what a single voice sounds like. Each voice has its own envelope. This knob lets you choose the shape of your waveform. There are a bunch to choose from. Some of the waveforms make use of this pulse width knob. Okay, I'm going to turn voice 4 back up. As you may have noticed, there's a little screen here on the keyboard. And using it, you can control a huge number of different things. You can load scales or make your own microtonal scales, add portamento. There's also an arpeggiator and a sequencer. I should say there are many, many features on this thing that I'm not going to be covering in this video because I have yet to fully explore them. For now, I'm just going to switch back into keyboard mode and see if I can play something simple. First, I'm going to record these chords into Ableton. Now I'm going to do the lead. I feel like I'm really taking us out of ambient music territory with this. Let's try adding some acoustic drums to it. What do you think? Should we add bass? So you see, you don't have to make ambient music with this. Overall, this is a strange and magical instrument. As a complete outsider to the world of Soviet-era synthesis, I really appreciate the nods to that legacy, both in the filter design and in the inspiration taken from Leon Theremin. I've never played a synth where tuning and detuning oscillators was just such a core part of the music making practice. Obviously, this isn't the kind of synth I would recommend to a beginner, not because it's complicated, it actually isn't, but because this is clearly a specialty synth designed for serious ambient musicians or people who do soundtrack work. If you enjoyed this video, it'd be great if you could give it a thumbs up. Also, if you haven't subscribed yet, now's a great time. It's free, and if you click the bell icon, the YouTube app should notify you the next time I upload one of these videos. Okay, I think that's it. See you soon.